Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today is a beautiful day. It's finally cooling off. It is almost the end of August, which is hard to believe. This summer has really passed by quickly. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about hummingbirds. I have a lot of things that I like to do with my yard. I have a food forest. I have a drought tolerant front yard. My backyard is pretty drought tolerant. I love to attract the pollinators butterflies, and then another thing that I love to attract is hummingbirds. Now there are a lot of plants, both drought tolerant and not drought tolerant, that hummingbirds love, and I wanted to show you some of the ones that I have in my yard and talk a little bit about how we grow them and how the hummingbirds, at least in my yard, react to them. So I wanted to start with one of the earliest plants that the hummingbirds seem to visit, and this is my cat mint. This is Walker's Low. It's one of the larger cat mints. There are many different varieties. Some of them are smaller. But this starts blooming most years in April, but this year it started blooming in May. And as soon as it starts blooming and the hummingbirds arrive, here in Utah they migrate through. So we get hummingbirds in Utah anywhere from you know, May through September. But anyway, as soon as this starts blooming, this is where the hummingbirds collect and they absolutely love it. Now another one that they love is annual salvia. Now I used to put annual salvia up here on my green stock. This blue one is an annual here in Utah. This one up here is hot lips. It's a tender perennial. I don't know how well it's going to survive the winter, but we're going to try because I absolutely love it. Sometimes you get this little white variation on it, but this right now is the hummingbird's very, very favorite plant. This one is coming out of bloom a little bit, but I'm going to show you my other green stocks and show you how well they, those are blooming. But before we go, this is another one, and I had no idea that it would do this, but this is pineapple mint that reseeded. I used to have pineapple mint in my green stock, and it's actually reseeded itself down here. Hummingbirds absolutely love that too. Plus there's this little purple salvia. This is another little annual salvia that I have down here. And on my way to the green stalks on my deck, let's stop by the hyssop. This is another one. I haven't seen the hummingbirds visit this one as often, but the hummingbirds do seem to love this. And this starts blooming in July and will bloom through September. Now I do have a plant of the week video on anise hyssop, and I'll link that above. Now these are wilting. I need to water them. It's been a really, really hot day, but this is the hummingbird's very, 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 very favorite spot. Now right behind me is my sliding door and my cat has a cat seat right by that door so he can watch the hummingbirds come through here. And it's really fun to watch them dive bomb each other and protect these plants. So we have the hot lip salvia, this little annual blue salvia that desperately needs water, which I'm going to do as soon as I'm done with this video. And then we have some marigolds down here. I've seen hummingbirds look at the marigolds before. I don't know if they actually like them because I've never seen them drink from them. Now this is a plant that the hummingbirds absolutely love. This is Zauchinaria or hummingbird trumpet. And there is an issue with this plant. The hummingbirds love it and they used to visit it all the time, but the neighborhood cats figured that out and they would hide in the plants and then ambush the hummingbirds as they'd come to drink from these. Now, because that happened last year, I think hummingbirds must have a long-term memory, but if they see any movement outside at all, they don't come visit these plants. So if I'm far away, like down the street, I've seen hummingbirds visit these, but every time I try to take a video, I never am able to do it because they, they just seem to know when there's somebody out and they don't, and they don't come anywhere near these. But let me show you one of the lower plants that they're willing to brave and drink out of. And that is the hummingbird mint. Now hummingbird mint is a perfect plant for hummingbirds. And I'll show you a few clips that I've taken of hummingbirds drinking from this. But they're made perfectly for hummingbirds. They have a lot of nectar and they're the right height for them. Now the right nectar plants are not the only thing that hummingbirds need. They need perches because they like to survey their territory and they're hilarious to watch because they'll sit up on their little perches 
and watch just to make sure that there are no other hummingbirds in the area trying to steal from their flowers. Another thing that they need is they need flying insects. Now, early in the spring, if you watch hummingbirds really carefully, you'll see them, well, it looks like dive bombing, but if you look really closely, a lot of times they're dive bombing through a mass of gnats. You know, we used to, especially in Southern California, I would see that a lot. We'd get those hovering masses of gnats in the air and the hummingbirds would just be flying through them. And I realized they're actually catching the gnats as they're flying. So insects are another important food source for hummingbirds that you need to make sure your property has. Another thing that they need is a place to nest. Now, not all hummingbirds nest here in Utah. Sometimes they're just migrating through. But the, for the hummingbirds that do nest, you need trees that are going to protect them. Let me show you where I think the hummingbirds are nesting in my yard. Now, my backyard here, I actually have a couple of blue spruces. And I, you know, they're too high up. I haven't ever seen any nests up there. But the hummingbirds hang around those trees all the time, and they seem to be protecting them very, very heavily. So I am thinking that it is possible that hummingbirds are nesting in those trees. Now, one of the main nesting materials hummingbirds use is spider webs. So if you have spiders on your property, don't remove the webs, don't kill the spiders, unless of course there's something like black widows or they're in your house. I'll kill the spiders in my house. But if they're outside, I try to leave them be as much as possible because the hummingbirds will use their webs. Now, another way to get hummingbirds in your property is to put out hummingbird feeders. Now I have done that in the past, but it's not my preferred way to bring hummingbirds to my property. Number one, I'm lazy. I don't like to change the, the feeders as much as they should be. They should be changed at least every three days at the longest. You don't want the sugar water to go bad and poison the hummingbirds. You don't want to put dye in there. Now my stepmom has a lot of hummingbird feeders and she is filling those hummingbird feeders at least once a day because she has so many hummingbirds. They are friendly. They don't care if you're out there. They don't care if you're a foot away from the feeder. They're there. So that is a fun way to be able to watch hummingbirds. But as I said, I'm lazy and I prefer to just put flowers out that they'll drink from. I would love to hear how you attract hummingbirds to your yards. What types of hummingbirds are there? And what are your hummingbirds' favorite flowers? So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.